these are your boys. Yeah. The LSU Tigers. Coach O, go ahead and tell you what the win total is. Eight and a half to go over, even money, plus 100. To go under is minus 130. And uh, and I went back and forth on this a lot, right? Uh, they were the least experienced team in the country last year coming in. Uh, they are now veterans this season because all of them got a, a lot of playing time. Um, what does changing both coordinators again do? Like, that's that's a big issue. Offensive coordinators Jake Peets and DJ Manga were with Joe Brady's staff in Carolina. That's right. They understand what he liked to do. So, Coach O wanted to bring in and reinstall that 2019 offense that was so successful. Offensive line is absolutely loaded. Yep. Uh, even without Rosenthal, who just transferred out, they're still going to be fantastic. Like, they have got a ton of speed, a ton of talent. The, talent is never the issue. Like, it's it's chemistry with LSU for whatever reason. Defense finished third worst in the Power Five last year. And, obviously, Bo Pelini tossed out the door. He was thrown off a bridge right outside of Baton Rouge. And the new D.C., of course, uh, Durante Jones. But they also brought in Miami defense coordinator, uh, uh, Blake Baker. And he is the linebackers coach. But he was fairly successful under Manny Diaz. I was just I about to say, I, I think their defensive coaching staff went Big, very big improved. Up. Yes. Big, big up. Very improved. Uh, this is uh, – defensive line is going to be Coach O's deepest yet, I believe. Uh, linebacker, there, it's a bit of a question mark, but you got you got guys. We just I mean, got, got bodies. Guys. I mean, and somebody's going to come out. At the end of the year, we're going to say, oh, that guy's a stud. Yeah. Now, the, the secondary, potential All-Americans all over the place. They didn't play well last year because Pelini put them out on an island. No, and, they, they really had no And clue. they dealt with injury. They talk about this all the time. Like, they've, they've been very open in the media about – not understanding where they were supposed to play and who was supposed to guard who. And and it, it was just a thing where they were young, they were inexperienced. And, and they Pelini, got no offseason. And Pelini was asking them to do something very complicated that they just didn't get. Yeah. So, so when one guy just goes rogue and says, I don't know how to do that, I'm just going to do what I want, what I think is best, and then you get a dude that's wide open, this is the SEC. Even the worst teams in the country or in the in the conference offensively can can hit a wide open receiver. Yes, like that, and then it's a touchdown. It's over. Yeah, and he never wanted to shift out of that man to man coverage. No, he refused. Like he, he refused. He, he just refused. Uh, I, I don't. I think it's just gonna, like I said. I'm biased. I have my own biases here. I think it's going to be just substantially different. Can this team go eleven and one? No, I don't. I don't see that. I mean, I would. I would love it. I'd be amazed. But that's not what I'm saying. I I do think nine and three is not outside of the realm of possibilities. No, I've I've got them going over eight and a half. I got them going over. Like I got I, them I, going over. I thought a lot about it, and and I really do think that they're going to go over this year. I think that this is a transition back to what they were good at. I think last year, with all the inexperience and the COVID situation and everything that was happening across the country last year, it was just a bad situation. This season with a win against Florida and a win against Ole Miss, the way they oh, did. Yes. I think these kids believe we're the best team in the country. Yes. I, I know that's crazy, and no fan thinks that. No analytical analysis thinks that. I think they think that. Though. Yes, confidence. That's, that's I really what matters. do. I I think they they pulled that game out against Florida. They pulled that game out against Ole Miss, and they, we just stopped the best offense in in the SEC, and and we just shut down one of the best football teams in the country, um, in, in Florida, in their place, it, at their place. Yeah. We, with a, with I, a freshman quarterback. Yeah. So, and, 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 I don't, and I don't know who's going to be the quarterback, by the way. And I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you this. I believe it's Max Johnson. Well, yeah, and there's a lot of – I mean, basically the LSU brass is 50-50. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the def, defining factor is, is do they really think they can make a national championship run or not? Yeah. Because if, if they think they can, it's Miles. If they can't and they think, man, it'd be great to go 10-2 and two, – and next year be special, then you then you play Johnson. That's, yeah, that, that makes that's, sense. That's that's the deciding factor. Who, of that. Whoever it is, whether it's Brennan or Johnson, I think they'll be good. I think either one's going to be fine. I think they'll be. I think good. Either one's going to be fine. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything dot com or Chris at winningcureseverything dot com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.